Okay, so on the left hand side we're playing a phone file as follows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And on the right hand side we have our transcription. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing for Change, Part 3, Transcribing Darkness. In today's episode, we entered by reflecting. We are of several minds. We have multiple goals all at once. We want to we have some projects to transcribe vocal recordings into scores like you just saw. We want to compose something called Darkness. And we want to start working with that new Do Re Mi scale that we came up with in our first part of this series, which we'll talk more about later. Um, we also, since last time, have two non-musical projects chugging along using our attention and intention. And we got a brand new music commission project, which we're very excited about, which involves coincidentally transcription. So what we've noticed so far about scoring vocals is there's kind of a core melody and a core tempo and a core rhythm. And, and then we'll talk about that more. In fact, why don't we show you? Um, so here on the left-hand side is a vocal recording that we're transcribing. Here's just the very first line. What it means to play this hand. What it means to play this hand. And you can tell that we have it on a loop. Now here is our transcription. And what we're saying is in order to catch the vocal characterization of the singer here. What it means to play this hand. There's a lot more narrative juice going, sliding and emphasis and so forth. So what we have to do is we have to differentiate the core from the added characterization. The core and the characterization, like it says right there, core and characterization. Um, because we need to leave room for the vocalist to interpret the score, but the musicians that are accompanying the vocalist need something on sheet music to, to follow, whether it's going to be a guitar chord or, or whatever. So we learned a lot already doing that. And you could hear us a little click track. Because a little bit later, there's a whole different kind of uh, syncopation. So that's like the first stanza out of, um, uh, there are five stanzas in this song, which is a copyrighted song, by the way. And we have permission from the client, thank her, thank her, thank her very much, to uh, embed some of our work here in our Composing for Strange Change stream. Now, the next thing that we did, uh, well, anyway, let's finish playing for you this transcription. Uh, there it goes. This was the original key. And then as we listened to it, we decided we wanted to add a backbone. then we were kind of doing that because we wanted to say what is the energy story of this and we we had to transpose this is different from transcribing transcribing is taking a recorded song you know like this one 11 12 13 14 15 and then transposing is putting it in a new new starting note
And you can see that we basically the B starting mm -hmm. note here pushed up one mm -hmm. step to the C. So, and what that has allowed us to do is to identify some good old chords to add. Uh, uh, where are the chord, the good old chords that we added? They're coming in here somewhere real soon now. Hmm. Oh, there, oh, there they are. They're these chords right here. So let's just make that a little bit clearer for you to see. So you can see we've had a very, very busy two-part stream that we're trying to recap for you right now. And this is only the first piece that we worked on. There, we added these chords because once we added a backbone, and then we then we kind of picked out a what we called a uh, an implied backbone. And then we added a polyphone, and then that, from that we came up with a cadence series. So, and then we we decided to pick. Uh, I think we set it here. Oh, for goodness sake, where is it? We decided to pick um, high consonance options. So, this is what it sounds like so far. we think has a nice pleasing completion to it so um, and then just for completion we already played this one for you here you go again So just reminding you that that is the permission to show that. And then finally, we got to our third thing, which is we wanted to begin composing in this new um, scale that we came up with, uh, which is uh, this one. So when we analyzed to a wild rose in part one of this series, we realized that it was not using the traditional C minor major scale, which has these notes, which do not use a D flat or a G flat. It was using this scale where it's not using the D and the F. We said, well, that sounds kind of cool. So we spent some time today comparing how they sound. And we came up with this uh, cool reference sheet for it. Where is it? This one? Yeah, this one. And we started composing in it. So just so you can hear the difference between the two scales, I know we're such a fanboy about this, but it really is cool. This is what um, I usually try to have this all lined up ahead for you. Okay, this is the traditional and this is the variation. So let's listen to the traditional. You'll recognize it in a heartbeat starting here. In the minor. This is our new major minor. Minor. So I think you can agree they're different. So how different are they? Well, we don't care. We decided we wanted to get started composing at it. And so we started to make a tonality reference area, which is what you were just hearing. But we're not trying to add any 120 chords to it just yet. We just said, oh, we need to add 120 chords, blah, 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 blah. At least we can get started. So this, what we started to do was pick out a very simple um, theme, four themes, four lines, and then we added um, a passing note. So this is this is everything in the minor scale except these two notes. That's what passing means. And then we added what we call a reinforcement line. And then we just added what we call an implied cadence. 
I know, I know. Hard to keep up, isn't it? That's why we said this a lot got done in these two two streams for this series. So what we're going to do to bring us home is play what we've got so far with Darkness Improvisation 1. Here we go. And that's it. <laughs> we don't have the cadences figured out for the rest yet. So in our traditional way, we shall say resume here. But we know exactly how we're going to generate them. So that's always nice. Sometimes we start something and haven't quite got a clue. That's why we say just jump in. So what we like about um, part two of this series is we really did have it. We really did jump in and are working on multiple goals at once. We're working on transcription. We're working on a new darkness theme and we're working with a new scale and the transcription has actually got two projects. One is our own vocal thing that we call Diddy 2 that we're elaborating and, and deepening. And the other is our commission. So our ideas for next time are to keep working with all of the above and with shout outs to Miss Cleo who keeps us inspired and also our newest followers um, that we got pinged by Twitch about your names. We appreciate it. And um, at the moment, we don't feel comfortable putting follower names in the shout outs unless they say something on stream which would to us indicate they're okay with people knowing what their handles are in any event tune in next time to see what happens do take care do come back and do keep on streaming <laughs>